But your thoughts on the potential of playing Andy Murray in your opener? He's a legend, you know. We played once, and he was in. A, we were both in a different position. He was uh, trying to recover uh, without surgeries for his hip, and then after we played in Brisbane, there was a five-set match against uh, Roberto, where we, me, myself included, everybody thought that maybe Andy is not going to come back. He's here and he's playing good tennis. Sometimes it's not easy when you are not seated to get this ranking back. But we all know that he can play really good, so I'm going to have to be at my best uh, if it's him who, who's going to win tonight. This, this depth right now of American men's tennis, it's, we mm -hmm. haven't had it for quite some mm -hmm. time. What stands out amongst this group of players that are kind of pushing yeah. this next group, and especially who has stood out for you? Yeah, I mean, I think right now, I've been asked that question a lot about like American men's tennis, but truly right now, I can say with a lot of conviction that we are in a, a very, very good place. I think the number is seven players in the top 40 in the world, most of any country. And I, I always said that it was just a matter of time before this would be the case. I think to really submit maybe American tennis back on the map would, I think to be able to get two players back in the top 10 would be, um, would be quite an accomplishment and to put you know, the USA uh, back on the map in, in, in men's tennis. But certainly there's a lot of guys that uh, deserve a lot of praise right now. Um, one thing that's quite nice for me is that no one talks about me that much anymore, even though I'm still ranked pretty high and I think I'm still, I think I'm still pretty good. But uh, it's, it's actually very cool for me to try to compete and uh, hang with these guys. Was there anything in particular with your rehab that was especially difficult physically, whether it be a, a ground stroke or an overhead, something along those lines, or was it more just the mental side? It was everything combined. Okay. I honestly was at a point where I wasn't able to serve, hit forehands or backhands. And uh, in ways, I wasn't able to enjoy tennis because I wasn't able to play pain, pain free and, and not have my mind on my elbow. And things like this kind of kill you in a way mentally. And uh, you wish you, you actually, it makes you realize how important it is how important it is to be healthy and to be competing pain-free and uh, kind of uh, take things from there. I, uh, I wasn't at a very good state mentally for a very long time and uh, I'm glad I'm past that and kind of uh, starting to flourish again and begin from scratch. I'm well, uh, at the beginning of the season my goal was uh, end of the end of the year uh, breaking the top 50, the top, the top 15, and uh, I'm so I'm 16 now. So I'm uh, I'm reaching my goal so soon. But uh, yeah, hope to uh, just to still growing up. I mean, uh, be able to end the year into the top 10. It's a good goal for me. Tough one, but uh, a good one, and uh, be able to classify to the ATP finals as well, if it's possible. Mm, win a Master 1000 or win the, as, as much titles as I can. And uh, yeah, good goals this, this season. You and I spoke last in, in Acapulco and I know there was so much attention on the number one situation. And I'm just wondering how you're reflecting on the last couple of weeks right now, what that meant. And are you maybe at this point where I just want to get to the tennis? It was a uh, strange two weeks for sure, strange uh, one month I would say because uh, before Acapulco I, know, I knew it's possible to, to have this done. Finally that uh, vessel a bit Novak helped me to achieve it and me in Acapulco I didn't manage to beat Rafa so if Novak would do better I would not become in the world number one. I lost this place, I can get it back in Miami. But looking back, uh, I've done, you know, uh, nobody can take it from me. I have been a world number one, but it's a lot of motivation to try to regain this place. Only I can do it, only I can play good here to try to make it, or next tournaments, and I'm going to try to make it. I have a lot of motivation for this. You see, I went, oh yeah. I honestly completely forget that moment, but I went over with two hands and his ball like runs away from me a little bit and I was like uh oh and it just I kind of let go of it and just hit through the ball did a little bit of a split there but my sister will tell you it's my shot in practice.
well, Christopher Eubanks said it was your shot in practice. Uh, Sebi Korda did as well. It's happened quite a few times, just not like this, I guess. Oh, oh. no way! That was a, that was a pretty big point. Okay. What was the score? Is that five all? Do you give a little lawnmower there? <laughs> <laughs> that energy from the crowd is going to be so Do you actually practice that from time to time? When I start my hits, I warm up left-handed. Really? To, yeah, get my wrists going. And I actually broke my wrist uh, in a soccer game. So I played for a full summer lefty. Both my parents are lefty, so. Two sets Six, three, six, two. Yeah, but I mean, thank you for us, man. Yeah, that's right. It's supposed to be slow, but it was good. Good luck, man. Thank you. Well. At least you have, what, two, three hot shots, so. Yes. You yes. will be on tennis. At least I'll be home today. You will be on tennis, Steve, with our goalies. Obviously, up next is Carlos Alcaraz, and obviously tennis fans are going to remember that, that one in the U.S. Open this past year. How do you step forward? How do you get revenge tomorrow night? Well, I'm going to try and fight. Uh, he's a great player. And uh, for me, it is going to be a, a big challenge to step out on the court. Um, uh, I like these kind of challenges. And uh, I'm going to try and put my, my soul out there and give it my all. Congratulations. Thank you. Actually flying on the spot. How's that possible? How's that possible? The fourth round of Miami, the biggest tournament, the biggest tournament. And you guys just can't do your job. It's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. Get a new set of referees. These guys don't know how to do sh Well, he's got to be careful. Yeah, he's, he's not just off. criticizing. It's a but. joke. Both of you guys served over 80% for this match. I mean, very high level. Yeah, first serve percentage over 80% for both of you. It also just felt like one of those days where just maybe a little bit more on the bigger points. Just talk about that offensive versus the counter puncher battle between the two of you. Uh, I mean, I was definitely worried about this this matchup because these courts and the conditions here are extremely slow. Maybe the slowest I've played on on tour in a long time. So I think Tommy's top five, top three, maybe even fastest movers on tour. So I definitely was a bit scared about uh, getting the ball past him today, not being able to finish some points. And there was definitely a lot of points where I had to play an extra ball or he kind of just dug it out and got back in the point. And, um, Francisco, tough way to get through to this first Master Series semifinals. I'm wondering when you first noticed something was wrong with Yannick and also just what this means. You know, sometimes these breaks just happen. Yeah, thank you. To be honest, I, I didn't know anything. Uh, when I was serving, I think, 3-1, 30 love, I saw him uh, bending down and I don't know. I, I, was, I, I thought, well, okay, he's tired or I don't know, something is going on, but it was really really strange because I practiced with him this couple of days. I warm up today with him at the same time here, not with him, but the same court. And I don't know, I didn't see anything wrong. So yeah, I was really strange and I hope he can recover it fast because he's a great person and a great friend. These breaks though, they happen from time to time and you have to capitalize on, take advantage of them. What does this mean in this stage of your career to now moving into the semifinals against either Kaspar Ruud or Alexander Zverev? Well, it means a lot. Of it's everything I wonder and I dream of, so yeah, I don't know, first Master 1000, first semifinals, almost 50 in the world, I heard, and yeah, it's going to change me everything now. Finds himself back to the lead in set two. Never ever advise anybody to, to buy this ball because it's a piece of garbage. And I think, yeah, that was a good advice to stand up because so I was like uh, sitting down really tired and then I, suddenly like every muscle just went cramp, 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 cramp. And I, I was like a, a fish on the, on the sofa. And uh, Miami. Yeah. See you on Sunday, says Casper. You bet. It's booked. First Masters final for you, obviously, first for your country as well. And just your initial thoughts on what it means at this stage of your career. Yeah, it means a lot. You know, I am still young, and this is kind of where these and the Grand Slams, of course, are the biggest stages in this sport, and this is where you would like to do well. And uh, all since I was a little kid, I've uh, looked, up, looked up to these finals on TV, watched pretty much all of them when I was young, on the, sitting on the sofa watching uh, the, the good finals. So it's fun to be here myself. and. Uh, uh, it's tough to say and too much uh, other than this. It's tough sometimes to reflect on everything, but uh, I'm enjoying and hope I can deliver a good match on Sunday.
Carlos, congratulations. A first Masters 1000 final for you here in Miami. And once again, finding ways to come through in the big moments. First off, how are you just processing the emotions of this next big step in your career? Well, uh, I have a lot of emotions right now. I mean, the, it's a uh, thing that uh, you dream of you know, when you when you you were a child. And, uh, it's pretty pretty good to be in a final here in Miami. I love playing here. The crowd was amazing. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, affront the, the, the finals like the, the the first round or at least try trying to, to to play like a, a first round, uh, trying to. To mass the, the nerves, but uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy, and uh, it's gonna be a, a great finals. Well, guys, you beat three Grand Slam champions this week, and then arguably the hottest team this year. A heck of a week for both of you. Congratulations. I think I mean like John is the hottest doubles player on tour right now, so I mean uh, definitely it was a fun week. I mean thank you, John. It's such a pleasure. So we had a great time. Yeah, John, Sunshine Double doesn't happen very often, especially playing with two different partners. You're only the second man to do it. How does that feel, kind of a feather in the cap there? Well, it certainly feels good, but, I mean, I partnered up well. I mean, you guys saw that last game is 40-30 them. I didn't hit a single ball, and we won the match. So thanks to this guy, uh, we're talking to you right now and not still trying to win the match. So um, it's a pleasure playing with you, but he does so many things so well, as we as we know. And he's got so much double skill also. So it's, it's so much fun for me. Thank you. Um, first of all, I think I would like to congratulate Carlos. Um, you're such a good player already. You're so young. And uh, if you continue like this, you will stand here many more times, I'm sure of it. You're a super nice guy, a hard worker. And to you and your team, I wish you all the best. Whatever you may achieve in the future, it's well earned. And uh, I respect you a lot as a, as a person and a player. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, more, one more thing. One more thing uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say for for Kim is uh, I think the most important thing that uh, you are a nice guy and uh, keep uh, yeah keep being la like this. But uh, I think this is the more important to be a, a nice guy and uh, you, you are. Yeah, no, it's uh, always giving to get a new career high ranking. Um, so it will be seven tomorrow. So might have to call Ronaldo because CR7 is uh, at risk now because uh, I don't know if I, we have to do some negotiations and see who can actually have this uh, number. But uh, no, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, I think, uh, yeah, when I... Uh, Win the last point. I mean, the, all the time that I dream of uh, is uh, came to my mind. You know, when I was younger, uh, I dreamed to get the uh, Master 1000. And uh, yeah, when I fall into to the floor, I, I remember that. I mean, the, all the all the dreams, all the hard work, all the training. Uh, all the travels, uh, everything came to my mind in that in that moment. <laughs> so it's uh, pre it's pretty amazing to get the call for the Spanish king. Uh, I, I was more nervous to that call for uh, than the match, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty amazing that the the, the Spanish king uh, recognizes you in the hard work that you put uh, every day and uh, your your win. It's uh, yeah, it's it's something that the, you you never you never thought that you were gonna receive a Spanish King call. It's amazing.